James Stefani Sterling. I predicted that James Stefani Sterling would be under 800,000 subscribers, which is less of a prediction and more of a mathematical certainty. Um, I suppose the only possible way that Jim would get would not have under 800,000 subscribers is if he did something radically different that pulled in a new audience. Um, however, he did not do that. He did not suddenly change his, his content. Um, he instead just kept doing what he was doing and uh, randomly decided to announce that he was pregnant. Let's uh, take a look. Oh, let's go to the time sampling because it's actually it's shocking like how random it is. Oh, he didn't time stamp it. <laughs> that reminds me. Um, you said Stephanie Sterling's son, and then my mind, like, as it filtered through to my brain, I heard Stephanie Sterling's son. And that's one of the things I was going to mention in the catch up at the beginning is that I am pregnant. Oh, the, that's not. Um... We'll, we'll watch this again, because you need the full context. Or rather, my body thinks it is. So oh. I started getting car sick randomly the uh, other week, and it turns out that the hormones I'm on have made my body think it's pregnant. So oh, nice. just announcing now that I have a strong, sturdy son on the way. I've named him Borkis, and because the baby will never be born, it means I get to choose who the father is. So watch yourselves, lads, because anyone who crosses me is going on the list. All right, then. All right, then. This is like the first street. <laughs> it's worth, I think it's worth talking about this a little bit. I've played this on stream before because it's amazing. And when it happened, it was a really big deal. And it, it circled. Usually, when one of these like people that I follow on my own does something silly, it's, I usually get first dibs to talk about it because it's in my sphere and I'm paying attention for some reason. This was something that was, that I thought was like a little gem that I got to, to hold in my hands until I was ready to talk about it. And I was, I was robbed of first dibs because um, I didn't take into consideration that people watching the podcast would talk about it first. And I was a little bit ornery about that because I thought I really enjoyed this clip. Um, but uh, it's sort of incredibly, um, Beatsy Croshaw took his his uh, zero punctuation idea and left the escapist with a bunch of other people made their own like member owned organization called second wind and they made their own a new podcast they basically just rebranded everything but kept the style the same or did changes that they wanted to or whatever and it worked out um they've had a lot of success and you know one of the first things, I think this is the first episode of their Windbreaker podcast. I thought, hey, let's have all the old escapist people get on board. And uh, that, of course, meant Jim Sterling, who is OG escapist, one of the first people to leave like uh, over a decade ago. And I think they're just kind of being reintroduced to Jim, like modern day Jim, only having in their mind the Jim of 2010 or whatever, because he left even before Gamergate or anything. So... They weren't really prepared for it. They weren't prepared for the degradation of this man, what his nonstop gooning has done to his brain. And uh, this was the result of it. You can really just see the absolute contempt for Jim building. Look, look let's just look in real time. Watch Yahtzee as he talks. You can just see him, his disgust building. He's shifting and comfortable uncomfortably like in his chair like he's made uncomfortable and then he just sort of goes into like detached mode where he doesn't he's like containing his facial reaction because he doesn't want to like say anything offensive he's trying to he's like he's like you know it's like if um a man walks up to you and he's like a homeless man and he like pro pro he propositions you with something he, he asks like do you have any change do you want to do you want to split this 40 loco that i have you know, or something like, hey, man, you want to buy like a bag of Coke? And you're like in this awkward situation where you have to say no. You have to get out of that conversation. And he doesn't know how because he's afraid that if he says something too negative, like, what the fuck are you talking about? Jim's going to go off on him and he's going to like try to call him like a rapist or like a Nazi or something. And he doesn't want that. So he has to like as... 
as carefully and passive aggressively as possible to detangle this conversation without without upsetting the deranged homeless man who is trying to sell him half of a 40 ounce on the street and he doesn't know what to do. Um, anyways, so that happened. So Jim is pregnant, but he and it is under 800,000 subscribers. Um, I was going, I was going to make the, the statement that Jim's videos are worse than ever. And I suppose it's hard to make that statement because it really depends on what you're what you're expecting and what you're getting out of it. In some ways, his videos are worse than ever before. On the other hand, Jim's videos have actually gotten better. And that is because he got rid of his old editor, who I'm pretty sure was like his ex-boyfriend or something. I don't know what his arrangement was with Justin, but getting rid of Justin was like one of the best things he's ever done. Because Justin was the one, I've complained about this many times throughout the, uh, uh, throughout my podcast, but he was the one that would add in this weird pan and zoom effect to every single fucking thing. Like th they would just go to a, a Shutterstock or any other kind of stock photo website, buy tons of bullshit images, and then pan and zoom every single thing and it was because every they wanted to like i i guess justin wanted to like vary it up and make it so that it wasn't the same thing every pan and zoom was a pan and zoom in a different direction at a different speed and if you watch if you sat down and you tried to watch jim's videos it was a genuinely nauseating experience it was seasickness i felt seasick watching his videos because of this atrocious editing and when he had his little falling out with um with justin which was messy in public uh he had to edit his own videos again and i guess it just it doesn't occur to him to add motion sickness to his videos so they're actually watchable um, from like a physical perspective, they are now more tolerable from a psychological perspective. Um, after Justin left, he became more unhinged and now his videos are like explicitly pornographic. Um, I don't think that there is a single video that he's made in the last couple months. Um, and I've actually stopped watching them again cause they were just too much, too much to sit through. Um, he, he, cannot go a single episode as far as i'm aware without talking about his man tits he pulls them up pulls them out he puts little pasties on the nipples so he can jiggle them around in the video um he makes allusions to his penis being defective now because of hrt like in every single episode there is some extremely disgusting um body horror type shit happening with James Stefani Sterling masturbating over the physiological changes that he's had from taking HRT and overeating. Um, it's really, it's actually really shocking. Uh, and this kind of sums it up. This uh, top 10 shittest games of 2023. Um, these, these videos, the top 10 shit worst games of uh, whatever year he does them every year. And they are his most successful videos. He's talked before um, at length at how those are his best videos. They will usually, they, in the past, they would get multiple million views like in the first week. Because everyone loves people shitting on things. I don't know why. Um, people tearing something apart very passionately is a very attractive thing. Like the Star Wars prequel reviews by Red Letter Media that like made their, their channel was people watching somebody very, very passionately talk for hours and hours about how much he, he hated the new Star Wars movie. Um, people love that for some reason. So to see his recent uh, top 10 shittest games um, not break 200,000 views is indicative that nobody watches his videos anymore. It's a... Uh, it's uh, his, his his channel's just dead, um, but he makes tons of money still. He still makes like tens of like ten thousand dollars a month. I think he barely dipped under ten thousand dollars a month, um, kind of recently. I didn't check up on that. Let me check right now. Actually, no excuse not to. Jim Sterling Patreon is at nine thousand five hundred dollars a month with five hundred and fifty five thousand five hundred thirty paid members, um, indicating that he receives less than two dollars per member and that's actually really surprising to me um because I, I i don't know of any other person on patreon 
who has thousands of members but doesn't make tens of thousands of dollars because usually people donate like five to ten dollars each. Uh, it's really surprising to hear that it's less than less than two per member. If I had to guess, it's probably most people donating two or three dollars a, a month, but because of the Patreon fees and the the um the card processor fees, he doesn't see a lot of that. Um, for instance, any credit card transaction, I think has a base fee of 30 cents, something like 30 cents. So if you do charge just a dollar by credit card, um, like almost like a third of that is just eaten by that base 30 cent per transaction fee. It's really high. It's a lot of money that gets taken. So, uh, it could be that. I have a feeling too, that his, his Patreon members, do that probably donate like fifty dollars each to a bunch of like to 50 different creators one dollar at a time and that's just like how they do because they're like all poor trends or something um okay so for 2024 do i want to predict he'll be under seven hundred thousand? that's a risky prediction that's risky because i think he's still going at like a, a thousand a week, sometimes two thousand a week. I don't. I'm not going to say it's under seven hundred thousand. Um, I'm not sure what. I'm not sure what to predict for Jim. That's a hard one. I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to say that Jim gets canceled. He is so. Phoenix. Um, but it is a woman, and he's a super vile, gross weirdo. Um, I would not be surprised if something happens and she comes out and says that he consent accidented her or something to that effect. You know what I mean? Um, he's not going to die. You're, you're being too too optimistic. I have a feeling he's going to get canceled, though. I just get a, get a vibe. My mic got canceled? Can you, my, my OBS shows me. I'm going to restart my audio engine. Can you hear me now? It fixed itself. Sorry. Um, I don't know. I, I'll just restate it then. Uh, I predict that he'll be canceled. He's in that relationship with that M to F or F to M named Phoenix. A biological woman probably will say that he raped her or something at some point. Um, because he is so so gross, I can only imagine how like sexually violent he is, and something weird's gonna happen with him. So, uh, 2024, Jim Sterling will be canceled. Is my official prediction for him. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.